Hi, this is Elizabeth Minchiele reporting from Rome, and today we'll be visiting Italy. Italy finally opened in Rome. If you might know it from its store in New York or Torino, I've been to the ones in Torino, Bologna, New York, and I have to admit that up till now was not that impressed, especially the one in New York. Maybe it's because I'm from Italy, I don't know, but I just thought, ugh, you know, why bother? Um, so I was prepared not to be so impressed by the one in Rome, but I was wrong. And so today I'm going to share a few photos and tell you what I really liked about it. Um, up on the top floor is the cooking school, and I just love the fact that it's designed by Arc Linea, my favorite designer, uh, and this sense of design runs throughout Italy. Also on the top floor is the Ristorante Italia, and this features cuisine dishes from all over Italy. Every day there's 20 different dishes from 20 different regions, and it changes all the time. But, and I didn't get a chance to eat here yet, but what I love is the design. Again, look at the open spaces. There's no other space like this. I, I can't think of one in Rome, um, that they've kept sort of the industrial feeling of the renovated train station. I love it. And the other thing that I really liked throughout the entire building was the sense of open kitchens. There seems to be very little going on behind closed doors. Um, not only were the kitchens amazingly designed, they were pristine clean, but they were full of happy young people working and they generally seemed really happy to be to have a job obviously but to be doing this and the other thing i loved was the whole space is flooded with light and has views over um, the area around it uh, the anoteca has obviously wines from all over italy but the thing that i loved the most was they actually have vino sfuso and you can bring your own bottle or buy a bottle there and fill it up uh, the Osteria Romana is one of the bigger restaurants, and here this focuses on the cuisine of Lazio. And they plan on having a different chef here each month. And first up is Anna Dente from San Cesario. And there she is, and uh, her restaurant's really famous, it's south of Rome. And I would suggest you get yourself there this month to, to try out her dishes. I think her menu changes every day, it's a fixed menu, um, or you can get a la carte. But, um, She's a fantastic cook, and it's a real treat to have her here in Rome. Uh, there's a couple coffee places in the, in the in Italy. This one is Bergnano, and it's on the second floor, third floor, second floor. Can't remember. Sorry. And um, anyway, the coffee was fantastic. And downstairs is Ili. And again, it's 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 just really easy. It's it's nicely designed. Uh, Vino Libera is the place where you can go for an aperitivo. And Vino Libera is a consortio, a group of 13 sort of natural winemakers. Not completely natural, not completely organic, but mostly. And um, you can buy the wines uh, by the glass, by the, by the bottle. And there's only two things you can have with them. You can have salami or robiola cheese, and you can have a whole salami or a half a robiola cheese. And I just like the fact that it's, it's really simple. There's nothing complicated about it. You know, you go, you choose your glass, you get your hunk of cheese, your hunk of salami, and you go sit down and enjoy it. One of my favorite parts of Italy was the rosticceria, and here the meat is coming from La Grande up in Piemonte, the beef, and the fowl is all coming locally from Lazio. I mean, where else can you have a roast guinea hen, Farona? Fantastic. And, and then there's the smaller restaurants that focus on, you know, primary ingredients. There's the fish restaurant here. And you can, you know, again, they have three or four things each day. And it's all coming directly from the fish market next door to it. Um, and then there's also a restaurant for beef. And the beef restaurant is, is, of course, right next to the butcher. And again, the beef is coming from La Granda. And... Um, you could have that in the restaurant either cooked in the form of a hamburger or tagliata or crudo, uh, which is really great. And so anyway, the, the, so the deal is you go to these restaurants and you, and you order what you want. And there's actually central tables. So if you know somebody wants uh, one thing and you want another, I think you can, you can come and sit down and, and sort of have a common area. Um, the, the beer section actually includes a microbrewery, which is sort of cool. And I don't know, I think it's about at least 100 times of, of bottled beer and about 12 beers on tap. And again, you can go and order your glass of beer and, and enjoy it with something from one of the restaurants around it. One of the most exciting sections is the part that's dedicated to the cured meats and cheeses. And these are for the most part from Presidi, not only all over Italy, but also some of the more important Presidi uh, from Europe, like, you know, Amon Iberica. And the displays, again, are just gorgeous. You know, you have these big baskets of, of wonderful salami, and there's, 
you know, you walk in and the smell hits you and it makes you want to buy, obviously, but so does what it looks like. There's the jamon coming in from, um, from Spain. And again, you know, the open kitchens allow you to sort of watch what's going on behind the scenes. And this guy, I love this picture of this guy, you know, slicing mortadella. Uh, and, you know, just everybody was really happy. <laughs> everybody was smiling. Um, and just to tell you, I mean, this is, where else do you see a pile of ragusano cheese? This is a really, you know, not a very common cheese from Sicily. And they had a big pile of it. And then you get to the mozzarella show, and that's uh, Roberto Battaglia there from, from Battipaglia, and that's Renzo Arbori talking to him, which is kind of cool. And he's not only bringing his um, mozzarella up from Campania, they're actually making it there. So you go and you say what size mozzarella you want, and, and, and the woman fishes it out of the out of the, the brine and basically it's been made you know at the most a few hours before you buy it porchetta of course from Mariccia um, to eat there or to take away and again the you know after you've seen the salamis and the cheeses and if you want to sit down and try some of them you go to the restaurant there uh, the day I was there the frigitoria where everything was fried uh, wasn't quite working yet I think and um, but I'll be going back if not only to, to try some of the fried fish that's from the Torrente brothers and they're up from Cetara again outside of Naples and um, it's pretty impressive. One of the great things also is that you know I said it was all light filled but there's actually an entire terrace that opens out the second floor so the amount of tables it just seems really well designed which is saying a lot for Italy so so often it's not. Um, the pasta and pizza, you knew it was coming. Again, this is, you know, changing daily. The pasta, the dried pasta is mostly from Gragnano. Um, and here is the pasta stations. It's all being made and served. This was sort of a period between lunch and dinner, so not much was going on. Uh, the fresh pasta, on the other hand, is being made right there. The tonarelli, the plin, the ravioli, um, tortellini really gorgeous fresh pasta that's being made all the time and I think it was just really cool to watch uh, these guys I stood there for like 15 minutes watching them um, and then uh, Alessandro Fracassini is brought his 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 Eno down from Florence where he's providing panini um, and I love the fact that the only non-design thing in the entire place was his sort of handwritten scribbles of the sandwiches that he's offering that day and of course, next to the Panino place is the, is the uh, bakery. And this was one of the most crowded sections the day that I was there. And people weren't really buying bread, but what they were really lining up for was the, the pizza that was coming out and also the focaccia. It all looked really good. Um, and then there's Luca Montesino, which is, he, he's the man behind these amazing looking desserts, which are supposedly supposed to be healthy, very little sugar. Um, they look gorgeous and um, anyway there was way too much to go through and I just want to say I'll be back to do shopping you could actually shop there I mean there's tuna there's pasta there's olive oil there's there's just about everything and it's 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 pretty great and I wish I had something I mean there's nothing bad I can say about it I was impressed bravo I mean it's hard to get things done in Italy these days that that, that work and that are beautifully designed and um, Italy is one of them. So if you're in Rome, go. Have a great time.